technology is not what I call the panacea of all these uh, traffic uh, uh, safety problems. Uh, it only can aid, can help enhance the uh, road safety. So what I'm going to go through will be, I try to divide the whole uh, thing into three sectors. First, the people, then the vehicles, and the traffic environment. So the people, we need to educate them. You create awareness of uh, road safety and also compliance. So you see a lot of enforcement cameras, right? Uh, really light beating, speeding. We also create a more conducive traffic environment so that uh, everyone can use the road safely. So uh, we have a traffic management uh, and incident management system on the roads. For some the EMAS that you see on the roads. We have uh, dissemination of uh, real-time traffic information to provide advance warning, also to create that there's something happening ahead and you have to slow down. And of course, the enforcement systems, right? And then the vehicles. Now, vehicles are getting more sophisticated. They can, uh, by itself, avoid accident. Uh, they can uh, even uh, protect the passenger, uh, passenger or the driver during the collision. Now what else? What else can technology enhance the road safety? Making it information more available to uh, road users. Now we may have may, may want to introduce this personalized travel information. So this will enable everyone to be aware. Like for example that trying to uh, beat that 50 cent or uh, one dollar saving before entering the ERP gantry. You could the system could alert this driver that in five minutes or 20 minutes, when you reach the gantry, the price will change so that he can start to slow down well before and not just at the gantry when you see that the time left one minute, you can still wait there for, for the one minute to save the 50 cents. So that can create uh, this personalized travel information targeting at individuals that within that area. And of course, uh, the vehicles being intelligent, they can also alert the road users or drivers. So safety alerts like, uh, I don't know, pedestrians ahead, vehicles ahead, or you have to slow down. So this is uh, something that the vehicles and the people can be uh, interacting through some uh, safety alerts. And how about vehicles interacting with the uh, infrastructure? So for example, like uh, if you uh, notice that when you're telling we're entering a, a curved road, they usually have these flashing embers to tell you to, to stop because it's going to turn red. Now, if this thing will happen in the vehicle itself, that means you are really aware without looking at the amber, the system alerting you that the, the light, traffic lights are turning red, then you will be able to slow down. Or in fact, the vehicle itself will try to stop it in time before you beat the red light. So you can see that uh, this smart junction allowing interaction between the vehicles and the infrastructure will in fact one day remove the need to have traffic lights because everything is in the vehicle, right? everything is controlled by the vehicle. So in short, you see that uh, more and more smart devices are needed, whether for the driver or for the pedestrians, so that you can receive the alerts information. You have a more and more in, uh, uh, ITS, uh, intelligent transport system, to enable all this to happen. So you can detect incidents, you can alert drivers and uh, pedestrians of the incidents. Uh, you can even manage the speed by telling them that this is now the new uh, speed limit. So especially when there is a congestion ahead, you can moderate the speeds of the, the vehicles you know, by displaying all the speed limit as the vehicle moves downstream. And of course, the vehicles will be getting smarter. Like you have heard of the autonomous vehicles. I think LTA also introduced the designated an area for autonomous vehicles to be on trial in the real environment. Now, these autonomous vehicles are very intelligent. Right? They can drive on its own without the driver. 
they can stop when there is a pedestrian. You know, even if you're drunk, you still can sit in that vehicle, and the vehicle takes you to your home. Right. So in future, you have no worry about being by. <laughs> so you will be handled by all these autonomous vehicles. The best is that uh, people are more. I mean, in fact, um, Google's, Apple's, so they are not into this uh, this uh, car makers kind of uh, business, but they also into these autonomous vehicles. So it's something that uh, very exciting. Right, if everybody, everything can be moving on without the drivers. Then whether you're handicapped, whether you are drunk, or whether you are a small kid without, or even without driving license, you can still drive the car. Drive the car, yes. <laughs> and uh, we, are, we are, in fact, it's now going to the next stage where we are connecting the vehicles. That means every vehicle is talking to each other. So they are connected. And I have seen a, a demo where two heavy trucks are approaching the pedestrian crossing. And because one truck is behind the other truck that, you see, that, saw, that sees the, the pedestrian crossing, they can let the driver of the other truck that I sees a pedestrian. So that, that truck can arrive at the crossing safely without hitting the pedestrians. Now these are all the uh, automotive safety technology. So I think these are very familiar, right? Lane changing assistance, like for example, if you your car moves out of the lane, they will let the driver. Right? If someone go too near to you, they also sound the alarm. They even help you to uh, brake in time for the in, in case you have a collision that is uh, coming going to happen. So these are the features that already uh, in most of the car makers, they have already put it in place. But of course, you will have to pay more. So, uh, so the question is that not all vehicles will create this if you, are not, you can't afford to pay. Right? Of course, this will lead to what I call the autonomous vehicles, which I mentioned just now. So on its own, you can drive, you can sense the environment, and you can speed, you can slow down. And if there's anybody around there, they will stop. So this is going to be something that uh, very exciting. Of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, how we can create uh, an interactive traffic environment, people, vehicles, and the traffic environment. So if you look at the first bubble, knowing where you are. Every smartphone nowadays have a GPS, so you know where you are. You get the relevant information in that area. How about vehicles? Yes, in future when the ERP tool is in place, every vehicle will have a GPS. So everybody will, I mean, the system will know where you are and it will provide all the relevant information. For example, if you are very near to a junction and the speed that you are traveling in, that's how I'm going to tell you that you have to stop because the light will turn red. You go to the next. Next one, this I mentioned earlier about the 360 degree sensors and then the connected vehicles. Vehicles and vehicles are talking to each other about the head or, or behind. So if there's an accident, then all the vehicles behind will be, will be, will be notified that there is an accident ahead. Then road signs, roads, other parts of transportation infrastructure can alert vehicles to the location local conditions. That's where I mentioned if you if the system know where you are, for some it is in a school zone, right? The system will alert you that you're in your school zone. Slow down. Right? Speed limit is 40 or 30. So this is something that can be done. And pedestrians and bicyclists can alert the vehicle of their presence because uh, the fact that everyone's holding a smartphone, transmitting your location, the vehicles will be able to know where you are. Now you look at the blue bubble. Okay. This vehicle is this one here, this driver here. He's not able to he can see the cyclist, right? But he may not be able to see this person who's up who is about to cross uh, the, the road. So the price spot is here. But the fact that uh, we are transmitting information to this driver that I'm here, the driver will then be aware that there's another person going to cross here. So he will slow down. Right? So it's one way of how 
the system or the interactive traffic environment can uh, can can happen. So even for example, in this case here, the green bubbles. So this lady is about to cross the road, but we will let this driver get this oncoming car. So yes, the temperature is very exciting, as I mentioned earlier, but this is not the only solution. Yeah, it's just a complementary kind of a solution to enhance the uh, road safety.